Hello everyone and welcome to my latest video essay in which I'll be talking about why modern film scores have declined in quality before I explore the golden age of scores and why they were so special. Firstly, there's a reliance on temp music, which in turn influences directors to have that style of music imprinted in their own movies. For those of you who don't know what a temp track is, it's essentially music lifted from another movie into one that a director is currently working on in order for them to get a sense of what kind of musical tone they're looking for. Some directors spend months, even up to years in post-production, which means a temp track can be in a rough edit of the movie several times over before a composer begins to work on the score. This means that the director has a preconceived notion of what the score should sound like, rather than letting the composer put their unique musical voice into a movie. This reliance on temp scoring has led to modern blockbusters sounding similar to each other. And while there are movies that are exceptions to this rule, the broad landscape of movie scores is one that sounds generic, with a general lack of musical personality. Orchestral film music plays a less important role in movies today, as filmmakers tend to favour atmospheric scores. Many critics point to Hans Zimmer and his use of computers to produce film music that has led to this rise in fragmented scores. While on the one hand, from the studio's point of view, it's cheaper to churn out a film score this way rather than hiring musicians, at the same time, it means that modern scores end up drawing influence from the current wave of computerised processed music, leading to scores, especially blockbuster movies, sounding very similar to each other. The YouTube channel Every Frame a Painting did a great video on why music in the MCU is not memorable. It was a combination of factors, but the main ones were the over-reliance on temp scoring, along with the use of computers to produce these scores. The example he used that stood out to me was a scene in the first Thor movie in which we see Thor's hammer in the middle of the desert, with another scene from Transformers 2 in which both tracks sounded near identical to each other. Though thankfully Marvel Studios have rectified this problem in the years that followed this video, with Black Panther, Doctor Strange, and Avengers 3 and 4 being the obvious examples that come to mind. The examples that I mentioned are all movies that were released in Phase 3, which begs the question of why Marvel didn't have the foresight to give this franchise a unique musical identity from the get-go. Here's a list of examples of mediocre scores for movies that have been released over the last few years. Now, I'm not saying that the movies themselves are bad. In fact, I've enjoyed all these movies to varying degrees. It's just that when you hear the music for these movies, it feels like there's only two types. The music is either quietly in the background for fear that it will distract from what the audience are seeing in front of them, or it's really loud and bombastic, case in point, Mad Max Fury Road, but without the score having any musical motifs or ideas. There was a time when composers and directors had a unique working relationship that was as important as the director's relationship with actors on set. Some examples that come to mind are Alfred Hitchcock and Bernard Herrmann, along with Steven Spielberg and John Williams. The working relationship between a composer and a director is an important factor in determining the quality of a film score. Because if the director shares the same level of passion for the music as the composer, then that's only going to be reflected in the final movie. My favourite director-composer collaboration is without a doubt Steven Spielberg and John Williams. If you're a film nerd like myself, and I've seen any of the behind-the-scenes footage for some of Spielberg's most iconic movies, such as Raiders of the Lost Ark or Saving Private Ryan, then you'll know that any time Spielberg talks to Williams about the movie's score, you can see his passion come across. Spielberg, like the best directors, treats the music in the film like another character and develops the same level of commitment, energy and focus in the development of the score as he would whilst being on the set of a movie. My favourite example of this is during a behind-the-scenes look at Indiana Jones and The Last Crusade, where Spielberg and Williams discuss the music for the finale between Indy and his father. Watching Spielberg's face as Williams' emotionally arousing music comes into play as Indy and his dad have an emotional scene together brought a huge smile to my face. Yeah, perfect time for that. I thought at first that could be a bit earlier, but that's fine. You like that between them? Oh, it's wonderful. It's a real statement of his theme. It's the kind of passion for scores that many studios don't convey in movies released today. The filmmaking styles of movies in the past allowed composers to develop fleshed out themes and motifs relevant to the story and characters. Examples that come to mind include Ben-Hur, Spartacus, and pretty much anything that's been directed by Alfred Hitchcock or Steven Spielberg. Take for example Alfred Hitchcock's North by Northwest. 
The opening credits introduces us to Bernard Herrmann's classic theme, which without hearing those notes, we would not be able to decipher the kind of movie we're about to watch. Unlike modern scores, past movies often placed music at the forefront of their movies, where directors made sure that the music was loud and noticeable enough for the audiences to hear. Perhaps the best example of this is the Star Wars franchise, and specifically the original trilogy. George Lucas once stated that the original saga movies were effectively silent movies, and that the music did a lot of the heavy lifting for the emotion of the stories. I mean, could you imagine the scene in which Luke Skywalker is looking at the twin sons on Tatooine without John Williams' magnificent score? Without Williams' music, the whole emotion of the scene is lost to the audience. So that's a wrap, people, on my video essay on the state of today's movie scores. So I'll now hand it over to you, as I want to find out whether you agree on the decline of modern film scores, and if not, which modern movies and composers stand out to you, as I'd love to hear your thoughts down in the comment section below. Thank you for watching, and as always, I'll see you in the next one.